Hello, everyone. It's your eccentric Aunt Tushy. Hi. Um, I have taken a bit of a break from YouTube, as you may have noticed. Just got out of the shower, too. So I'm particularly frumpy uh, and partially dressed. I took a little bit of a break. After that whole Mike's Thoughts things, and I don't know if, if uh, you know, you watching now, I don't know if you saw it, but... Uh, I got very, very angry at someone I used to like. Just someone on YouTube. He didn't even know who I was, it seems. Although we have uh, just, you know, chatted lightly during live streams and such in the past on Who Is She's channel. And I've kind of, uh, although I like Who Is She, I don't like everything they do and say there. But... <sighs> Pardon me, I've got hairs hanging all down. Um, it was a fun room and fun, creative people, and I enjoyed it. But Mike is their their little baby. He's like their Shirley Temple, their little star there. So I don't feel that I'm really going to be welcome there. So I haven't been back. Um, you know, Mike didn't do anything so egregious, I guess. Just rude and gross, laughing at uh, someone's fatal illnesses, potentially fatal illnesses, laughing at Chantal Marie becoming sicker and sicker, thinking it's funny because, because the illnesses are due to her weight, which are due to her compulsive overeating disorder, which are caused by childhood trauma. And Mike just thinks that that is uh, fodder for comedic videos. I'm just tilted a little bit here. Both in personality and in the, my camera. So, I got mad at something he said. Pardon the noise. I'm getting my makeup out. Using this time to do my face. Uh, I got I got angry with something he said, and I made a video telling him off about it. I still stand by it all, uh, but I would like to put it behind me. Uh, I don't want enemies on here. I don't think it's a helpful or healthy thing. Um, I don't wish any ill upon Mike's thoughts. I hope he has a good life. I think he needs to get out a little bit. He's from America. Living in England, he has a husband who I'm sure would like to spend some time with him. Uh, if I lived in in the UK, I would think I would be spending a lot of time out sightseeing and doing things. And, you know, I live here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and yes, there's stuff to do and there's some things to see, but it's limited. It's like once you've done it and seen it, that's it. It's not very compact. It's a lot of uh, just space in between. But there, they've got so much. They've got so much. And he spends his time watching Chantal and worrying about what she's doing. He needs to be worrying about himself. Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I said I wasn't going to keep on that, on that particular path. But so after I made this exhausting video, like it really kind of emotionally wrecked me there for a short period. Uh, it was very upsetting because being a fat person myself, someone who has been fat forever, um, I know where, you know, where some of that is from and what it feels like and being so out of control and being so unable to have a normal life and so unable to, even with the risk of death hanging over her, she couldn't get her eating together. Oh, I'd forgotten I did this. I put my lipsticks. Are, are these lipsticks? Oh, ooh, they're really pretty shadows. I forgot I own these. Anyway, it's a whole mess. So I got so mad at him, but then just days later, she went from what seemed to be the brink of death to being okay and being off looking for looking for sex with strangers and uh, and eating voraciously, mukbanging. And uh, it just made me, it made me, I don't want to say it made me mad at her, 
but it broke my heart a little bit. It made me feel really betrayed by her. And uh, I can't see well, y'all. I, I don't know how to do this. If I put on my glasses and I can't get to my eyes, I'm not sure what to do. But we're just going to hope for the best here. Go by feel. going to Helen Keller it. Uh, but it made me feel some kind of way towards her, towards Mike, towards just the whole community and the grossness and ridiculousness of it all. And I had to take a, a little bit of a break. I still went in Negs' room sometimes because he, and I am a member, a proud member. I like Negs. I hate his politics, but I think he's a cool person. And and he works hard. He works hard for his YouTube bucks. And why not? I admire him. He's got an empire going there. Uh, you know, he talks about other people. It's fucking wonderful. And um, Shanny for Christ and all that. So there's there's more going on than just, just talking about... I mean, he doesn't talk about Chantal in a negative way at all. As a matter of fact, he kind of stands up for her insofar as... She deserves to go on her channel and eat a sandwich if she wants. Because she's a grown-ass woman and she's a human being and she's an adult human being. And if you don't like it, don't watch it. And quit being a hypocrite and shut the fuck up. <laughs> He's such an old punk rocker. It's awesome. Uh, I got John into watching him now. Like, Negs would fit in with our little merry band of old punks here. As long as he didn't talk about politics. <laughs> so, I don't know. Anyway, it upset me a bit. I got kind of bent out of shape and I needed to take a little bit of a break and um, take a little break from it all and figure out what I really wanted to talk about. I still don't know. I do, actually. I have a, a book that I want to read y'all. A little story book that I picked up at a, at a yard sale. And when I got it, it was like a man and woman running the sale. Young, youngish, you know, 30s. Man and woman. He was running the sale. He was kind of, you know, starting to make a lot of bargains with people. It's like until he wanted to go inside and watch the ball game. There's some a Razorback game, and um, and he, there was this book, and I picked it up, and I was like, I read the back, read just enough of it that I knew I needed to buy it, and his wife came home, and she came out and saw me buying the book, and she ran over and, like, apologized to me because she was mortified that her husband owned that book and that he had put it out there for sale instead so of just throwing it in the garbage. And I'm like, are you kidding? I was so excited. This looks fun. I forgot John was even here. I just heard him in the bathroom. Hey, I'll pop on and see if Negs is on there. Why? At a mass shooting in Indianapolis. Oh, shit. Eight people dead. No way. At a church or a... I don't know for sure yet. I just got the memo. Oh, hell. I don't even know if this is mascara or... Uh -huh. Pretty close where he lives. Well, get on there and check it. Okay, spank this kitten over. Ain't <laughs> having it. Anyway, you I. Share. You can stay here. So, uh, I guess I'll come back and read y'all that book. It's a pretty short book; shouldn't take too long, and I think everyone will enjoy it. And uh, I just want to pop on and say hello, let you know I'm still alive. And I've been doing my job. He's been keeping me alive. He's been doing his job. Can't find my mascara or my eyeliners. What have I done? FedEx facility in near Indianapolis, I report. Oh, jeez, really? Glasses. Where are my glasses? Glasses, where are my glasses? I just had them. Oh. Seriously, I just had them. 
found some eyeliner. Can't put it on. I don't know where my mascara is. Is it possibly in something there, besides this? Yeah, they're probably in these little little ipsy bags that I have. Where are they? In the bedroom. Okay. Um, by my side of the bed, there's a pink fuzzy one. Mm -hmm. And there's one that's kind of clear with blue markings on it, I think. He's so nice. I don't even have to ask him. He just does for me. He's so nice. Mr. John Miller. I don't think I'll edit this at all. It's just, here it is. Because this is life. I almost said my last name. Lot of y'all know my last name already if you've been watching me for any amount of time. <laughs> Some long piece there. I can't stand that. If it offends you, whack it off, which sounds terrible. I'm sorry. Hey, when I was a kid living in Pasadena, Texas, we had these two stores that my, my Aunt Rosalie, who was only five years older than me, still is only five years older, she refused to go shopping at them. One was called Wieners and one was called Whackers, and she found them both very offensive. Thank you. Remember when I complained about this fuzzy one? Because I was like, what the hell color is that? What the crap color is that? Well, I realized it's light burgundy. The burgundy strap, it's just a very pale version of that. So now that I've identified the color, I'm not as offended by it. Isn't that silly? Yeah. Yes, it is. I know it. I know I'm ridiculous. Okay, I'm finding lots of stuff. None of it's what I need. So many products that we really probably don't need. Uh, <laughs> F you, Ipsy. Ipsy was fun. They just, the colors they sent me were very unadventurous. I still can't see. Do you see my black and white glasses in there? What have I done with them? They're not. They're up in the bedroom. I don't think. Well, yeah, they might be on the lampshade. See, so helpful. So very helpful. Yeah. Place you put them when someone's feeling frisky. <laughs> Gotta put my glasses on the lampshade so I don't get my fingerprints on them. Get any wiener prints. Wiener prints on them. <laughs> you beat me to it by just a half a second. I and, was about to say dick prints, but you know. And you're shocked that I said it too, aren't you? Especially no, I'm since not. I'm putting it up on my, <laughs> my hair needs a little conditioner. I've been using this bar bar shampoo comes in a little tin. I forget. Do you remember the name of the, the brand? Not off the top of my head. It's some I found at Dollar Tree and it had three different scents and I almost grabbed one of each and I thought, no, I don't know if I'll even like this. It's Dollar Tree. It may be just terrible. But I brought it home and it was wonderful and I went back to get some more and it is all gone. This just says a state on it. I think it's an eyeliner. See, like, how am I supposed to... I need those glasses that flip down. This hot pink looks horrible. Uh, I can't... I, getting closer doesn't help me. My whole life, getting closer made things look larger and clearer. And now, after my eye surgery... It just gets blurrier when I get closer. I really can't tell what I'm doing. This is gonna look so crazy. So crazy. Sorry, John, I'm gonna look like somebody that should have birds nesting in their hair. Look at my nails, by the way. I have finally mastered the nails. I stopped trying to build them and Started using a technique where you basically plaster some false nails on with acrylic and or gel and fill it. And Sorry. 
And then the decorations, of course, I did myself. I'm still gonna figure out how to sculpt a beautiful nail because that's the real, those are the real artisans, people that can sculpt a pretty nail, build it, and then file it out. Oh no. I can see just well enough to tell this is not good. No. <laughs> I don't think I'm ready for prime time. <laughs> John Miller. What did I do? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's a pencil I don't remember ever owning. A lot of this stuff I don't remember because it would just come in in the Ipsy bags and I wouldn't use it and then I just shove it away. Like, oh, another tan eyeshadow. How delightful. Let me first primer. I keep forgetting to use primer. I don't even put makeup on my whole face much anymore because, you know, masks. COVID. Oh, there's my eye, my eye, uh, my mascara. They get in this princess lash mascara. Bailey Sarian recommended it, and Peanut, uh, John's Peanut Gallery. <coughs> John's Peanut Gallery. Not my John, her John. And one thing I don't like about it is it seems like it flakes off after a little while, especially if I rub it excessively, which I shouldn't do. But I forget sometimes that I'm wearing mascara. I don't get dolled up very often because I've just been home so much. So, I'm going to come up with some content, and I know y'all don't care, some of you, just as long as I would show up and talk to you and say, hey, you're pretty happy, but I'd like to actually be entertaining, too. This, this video is not it. This video is just a hang out with me video. Would you like it if I do more lives? Maybe like do a weekly live and set a certain time for it. That might be good because I know that some people are always like, oh no, I missed your lives again. I always miss your lives and usually it's just me and Adventurer's Gill pops in pretty often, and sometimes Mr. John Miller from right beside me will pop in, and uh, I think it would be nice to have more interaction and do maybe uh, like a live while John's cooking, because I don't know if y'all know, he's a gourmet chef. And uh, that's a little bit stretch. No, it's not. Look up the word gourmet. He's a gourmet chef. He doesn't do it for a profession, but that means that he enjoys it. He's not having to do it. He does it out of love, and he cooks me some of the most wonderful dishes. And I mean, sometimes it's Thai food, and sometimes it's French food, and sometimes it's some brisket, you know. I can cook damn near anything if I have yeah. the right stuff to do it. I'm near anything. You heard him. Well, he watches a lot of videos on YouTube of all, all sorts of cooking, cooking videos. And we, we love watching Chef John from Food Wishes on YouTubes. And uh, he makes a lot of fantastic looking stuff. And my John has recreated many of them. And most of them have been amazing. Some have really needed a little zhuzhing. But I've got on my uh, Joan Crawford eyebrows, my angry, better listen to what I say eyebrows, one of them much darker than the other. Oh, well. Uh, <clears throat> so, 
we are off to go to some thrift stores. I'm looking for a couple of specific things, including ten inch cake pan. A ten inch cake pan of some depth. And that lipstick doesn't look right on me today. Where's my tissue? You see my tissues? Come in. That's who I thought. Uh, and I am looking for specifically, I can't think of the man's name that designed him. Link, something Link or Link something. I cannot remember his damn name. But in the like 50s, 60s, 70s, he, he did some popular furniture designs, uh, including the French Provincial and one called Bali High. And I found in looking for more French provincial furniture, because I decided I want it in my bedroom, I have one piece. I have found that it is worth a lot of money. It can be very expensive if you're buying it from people that know what they have. But I, I've been seeing that kind of stuff for years and years and years in thrift stores and yard sales and you know the little junkier used furniture stores. And I think none of them know what they have. My makeup is a little, a little sharp. That's all right. You know what? Nobody's going to even look. So, I'm going to be keeping my eyeballs open. Because, I mean, I have, I have the top part of what was a little short dresser with a hutch. And I found the hutch for under $10 at a Goodwill. Brought it home to use for to organize my my nail tech stuff. And that's better. I'd like to find the bottom half. That's what started this whole journey. And I found that my particular hutch is worth probably 300. Uh, it's got some chip paint, but 250, 300. And with the bottom part, it's easily a $550 piece of furniture. So I'm I'm going to be out there looking for French Provincial and the Bali High, which was made to look like it was bamboo trimmed. It's just carved wood, but it, yeah. So anyway, that's it. I am now beautiful enough to be seen at the at Fayetteville, Arkansas thrift stores. And I'm going to... I don't know why I feel compelled to do so, but I'm going to go check out the uh, shooting. I think Negs is probably just fine, but... No, Negs is fine. I just wonder if he was having some comments. And, oh my God, I just found something I'm going to make. Oh my God, what is it? Mozzarella onion rings. Mozzarella onion rings. Come on, third chin. <laughs> hey, it's not full of sugar, so... I'm going to start calling me chinny here soon. <laughs> All right. I love you guys.